Hello, and thank you for joining us on looking at Calpon Infini DB and a new data warehouse benchmark that was released in January of 2011, comparing Calpon Infini DB and a role-based database. For this benchmark, we turn to Bert Scalzo and Oracle Ace. Bert Scalzo is a database expert and an Oracle Ace. He has worked with Oracle databases for well over two decades. Mr. Scalzo's work history includes time at both Oracle Education and Oracle Consulting. He holds several Oracle Master Certification and has an extensive academic background, including a BS, MS, and PhD in Computer Science and an MBA. Mr. Scalzo is an accomplished speaker and has presented at numerous Oracle conferences and user groups. His key areas of DBA interest are data modeling, database benchmarking, database tuning and optimization, Star Schema Data Warehouses, Linux, and VMware. With that, I'd like to welcome our author and host for today, Bert Scalzo. Thank you, and welcome, everybody. I'm going to talk about the benchmark I recently performed on the InfiniDB by CalPont, and I want to cover some key subject areas, starting with the database object size. InfiniDB 2.0 is going to be compared during these slides with one of the leading row-oriented databases. We're going to look at several different user types with a mix of data analysis, query, and reporting needs, with a very heavy stress on ad hoc reporting. Now, the dimension tables in this particular star schema ranged from several thousand to several million rows, and the largest fact table had over 40 billion rows. That's billion with a B. And the raw data size was about two terabytes. Now, if you notice in the database object size, you can see pretty clearly that the size with InfiniDB is less than the row size database and significantly less than it if you purchase the InfiniDB compression. Now, database load times are important, even though they're only done once or on occasion. But InfiniDB has numerous advantages. First of all, there are no indexes, so you don't have to create indexes and, and experience the time and the space consumed for them. You don't have to build aggregate or summary tables. You don't have to collect statistics, and you don't have to use complex partitioning schemes. All of those four bullet items are actually performed for you internally by the intelligence of the InfiniDB database engine. It looks at your data, and it comes up with the best for each of those without requiring you to do them. So you also save in the complexity as well as the load time. Now the total query runtime. What I did was I captured from a real live system a whole host of queries. This was a two terabyte retail system. Uh, it was used primarily for data warehousing and ad hoc reporting. And I captured about a half hour's worth of activity. And that means all the queries necessary to generate all the reports. Now, InfiniDB 2.0 versus the row-oriented database, I saw about an 85% decrease in total runtime, where total runtime is uh, if I had 100 queries and I ran all 100 of them and I clocked the time for each and summed them up, this is what total query runtime represents, and it was 85% faster or seven times faster. Now this was a 41% improvement over prior versions of InfiniDB. I actually performed this exact same analysis uh, in 2010 in January. And these results were 41% better. Now that's a huge improvement in the internal uh, workings of the optimizer and the database engine. Now the query runtime averages is a little bit more complex to explain. It's a very complex statistical formula, and the formula is actually contained in the paper that goes with these slides. In a nutshell, how predictably and reliably will the database optimizer perform against a wide-ranging set of queries? What I mean here is, if I have 100 queries that I've captured, it's sort of like in the Olympics. I have to give each of them a score, and I want to look at the lowest and the highest, and also what the mean is, and then I want to figure out how predictably the average is for the queries. In other words, 
do some queries run really slowly, do some run really quickly, or on average, do they all run about the same amount of time? And the key point here is this is not running the same query over and over. This is a wide-ranging set or battery of queries and looking at the, the differences or the deltas in the run times. And this is critical for true ad hoc environments. So for example, if I say that the average query runtime range is 60 seconds, plus or minus 5 seconds, that means out of all 100 queries, all of them ran between 55 and 65 seconds. So there's about a 10, 10 second range there. And I can say that with a 95% confidence level. That's the important item for a lot of people. Being able not just to say what the average is, but also being able to say how confident you are. Because in a true ad hoc environment, you're not going to know every query. So you have to establish some kind of confidence. Finally, we want to look at database costs. Now, of course, everyone gets discounts and pays different prices, especially for people in government that. But for an apples to apples comparison, assuming that you would get like discounts, then what happens is we get from InfiniDB improved query optimization, this enhanced partitioning that's built in, and, and whose intelligence is built in, as we said earlier, not requiring me to design a complex partitioning scheme that automatically does intelligent partition elimination. I get user-defined functions and a very competent, very robust physical data compression. And when I look at the cost with a typical row-based database, you can see that the savings are at least 90%. Again, once you would apply your discounts with each vendor, I would think the same typical ranges would hold. So you can pretty much go by these. The important thing is, is that when you buy InfiniDB 2.0 and you make this investment, you know that it's going to scale excellently into the high terabyte range. Uh, I've done as large as multiple terabytes, so into the 10, 50, 100 terabyte range, and have had no performance problems. I've gotten both excellent and predictable query performance. It's not just important to have good query performance, it's important to have that, ex that, that predictable or what you can say with confidence will occur. When you can do those kind of things, you get an excellent return on investment. And that's actually the most important thing. It's not what the actual cost is, is what value do you get for the cost. You cannot beat the return on investment, I believe, with the CalPont InfiniDB 2.0. So key takeaways with InfiniDB 2.0 versus our typical row-based database. Our first area was the object size, and you can see that even without compression, which is not that expensive an option, but without compression, 22% better. With compression, 97% better. Of course, these numbers will vary in your setup. Um, compression is very sensitive to the nature and type of data, so that uh, some data will compress really well, others will not. Again, this was actual live, real-world retail data. So that 97% is pretty realistic, I think, for a lot of people. The database load time was 36% faster. Uh, that was significant because not only was it 36% faster, it was 36% faster with zero effort on my part. The query run times. Now, 85% decrease in the total run time. That's great, but what was more important is I could say that with an 87% confidence rating. In other words, I could predict the response times would always fall within a well-defined range that would be within my service level agreement. That's critical. Take all of that, and then it costs less, and in many cases significantly less than a row-oriented database, and then you can see the return on investment that I was talking about earlier. Now, if you want to learn more about the CalPont Infinity 2.0 database, you go to www.calpont.com the paper, the slides, and other information will be there. You can also email at info at, at calpont.com, and you can call them at the phone number listed there below.